on today's episode, we are joined by bad bitch extraordinaire, <laughs> Emmy award winning actress. Uh, yeah. Can we take a pause for the Emmy? Can we have a, this is, snap. <laughs> it sounds like snaps, snap. I feel like in the, <laughs> in the microphone, <laughs> snaps for the Emmy. <laughs> and just like, Overall, you have a jewelry line. You have so much shit that you're working on, and you are killing it. On top of the fact that you are drop dead gorgeous, and like everybody <laughs> wants to be you. Today, we're talking about red flags: how to yeah. spot them, where they're at, what to do when you see them, how to just kind of overcome. How about a guy that won't buy you tampons? I feel because he doesn't like want to be I, seen doing it. Yeah, I feel like I was like dating somebody and they were like and I asked them to give me tampons and they were like eh, like made a joke but like didn't really want to do it if you don't, don't go like get me it. those but you want to be inside me but <laughs> you can't get me a motherfucking tampon for what comes out okay because <laughs> you look like okay a, a girl buying tampons or you look yeah. weird like Please. Yeah, that's a red flag. If my dad can buy me tampons right you can buy me tampons sir <laughs> like step up to the plate <laughs> Look, if I got to go buy Plan B at the store, right. go get the tampon. But they don't have a problem going to buy condoms. <laughs> oh, You'll walk right in there and buy a condom. Like it's nothing, right? Because that makes you feel like a man. Ugh. Well, real men wear protection. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, no, right, 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 right. But <laughs> real men also go and buy those tampons. Of course. Get me some pads. Yes, I want them overnight. Okay. <laughs> I was just about to say the don't same. Don't get no regulars. The same thing. Super jumbo. Well, Full coverage. Full coverage, <laughs> front to back. And I want that flex foam. Okay? Don't be getting me no big ass pillows to sit on. That's not going to happen. That is, that's a red flag. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. So right out the gate, that's where we're at. Yeah. It's a red flag if he won't buy you tampons yes. or pads. Yes. Huge. It's a huge one. I guess for you, what are some automatic major red flags that you've noticed even in like romantic relationships but also in friendships because I feel like there's a lot of red flags that we see with people who we're like trying to get to know and deciding if we want to be friends with them right. that we ignore and then later on it's like you're 10 years in with this person you find out that they're a sociopath yes this is a personal account <laughs> attestment Ooh. for something that happened to me Ooh. um <laughs> we're gonna get into that in exactly. a little bit yeah exactly. ask a lot of questions what are some automatic red flags to you Okay, since we were talking about men, I think the number one red flag on my list is their relationship with their mother. Boom. Ooh, Drop the mic and girl, exit. It is so... Yes. And I never even... It was never a thought, a question, or whatever until I, you know, saw it firsthand. And I was like... Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> that... This yes. is like this yes. because of that. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen other men who have fantastic relationships with their mom. Yeah. And it's like so different. Yeah. It's 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 a respect thing. They learn that from the household and from mm -hmm. their parents. And when when you can't even respect your own mom, yep. you're not gonna respect any woman out there. Yep. I had my Ooh. sister was talking to some guy. And one of their first conversations that they were having, she really liked him. She was like into him. And then they were having a conversation about family. And our family is super, super close. Mm -hmm. And this guy goes, yeah, I fucking hate my mom. She's such a bitch. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Bye. Dial it back, baby. Block. What? No. No. Like, unless, I mean, I can understand if your parent has done something atrocious to you, something that's like unforgivable, then yes, I get it. But... If she just is telling you about yourself and like holding you accountable for your actions, mm -hmm. um, what's your issue? Right. What's your problem? And like, what possesses a person to be that hateful towards somebody that has raised them or like who yeah. they come from? Again, if something, if they did something that whatever, yeah, whatever it is, unforgivable action, unforgivable action, exactly. That makes sense. But mm -hmm. for you to just say, I hate my mother, she's a bitch. Like, there's like some history there. And you have to go to therapy, sir. Oh, for sure. You have to go for sure. ASAP. I think I mean, it's I feel like it's just the same just in general when it comes to parents, like you can't choose your parents. And that sucks a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But 
I feel like there's still a level of gratitude for the person who brought you into this world Yeah, that I feel like you should respect. But I do, I totally agree that if they don't have a good relationship with their mother, if they don't treat their mother with respect or just like simple things, like Mm. there are simple things that like, so for instance, my boyfriend loves his mom. Like that's like his queen Mm -hmm. next to me. That's his queen and his sister and like adores them. Yeah. And I see the way that he is with his mom and the way he is with his mom is the way that he is with me. Mm -hmm. Very nurturing, very caring, very like adoring, always wanting to do for. But if you see a man who will literally walk past his mother's life alert body on on the ground (laughs) (laughs) and not do anything, that's a red flag. Yeah. You have to pay attention to that. Wait, what do you think? I just thought about this. What do you think about it being the other way? A female's relationship with her father. Do you think it goes the same way? Mm. No, because girls are just better. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that like we were talking about in the beginning, women just learn to overcome. And... As someone myself who, you know, I got daddy issues. And, uh, uh, me too. Hello. Hey. <laughs> right there with you, sis. <laughs> Therapy. Yes. We're working it out. We're working okay. on ourselves. So, you know, for us, I feel like I, I could never say that I hate my biological father, even though he left when I was five. I have not seen him since. I'm 28 now. Yeah. But I would never say that I hate him. I don't have hate in my heart for him. Right. But... Do I think that he's a low down, dirty scoundrel? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) But I don't hate him. And it doesn't then affect the way, it does affect the way that I am in relationships to an extent, but not in the sense that I hate men because of it and I'm going to mistreat you because of it. It just makes me more guarded. Like it makes my heart more guarded. Right. But I feel like in the reverse, when it comes to men and relationships with their mothers, it doesn't make them more guarded. It just makes them mean. Yeah. Towards and, all women. Right. Yeah. And I don't, like, it's it's literally the way that they see their mothers is the way that they formulate their idea of women in the world. Yeah. But I can't say that, and it could just be a personal account to myself, the way that I had a relationship or did not have a relationship with my biological father did not affect the way that I see all men in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll say jokingly that all men are trash, but I don't actually believe that to be true. You know? I think that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I think that they are trash. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They do act trash. Majority though. of men. A large percent. A large percentage. Girl, I'm in like the dating world right now, and I'm just like. Ooh, what's it like? I'm just like, ugh. Whether you're like famous, not famous, rich, not rich, ugly, cute, fine, mm-hmm. girl, girl. A mess. Girl. I've heard horror stories. Girl. You ain't missing nothing out here, yeah. okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've heard. It's, it's bad. <laughs> heard. It's real bad. And picks up the red flag you guys can't see but i brought my red flags here let me just the whole dating scene has a red (laughs) flag wave them around i know i mean but it's also my fault because i'm gonna be honest and like i attract a certain type of man you Mm, know what i mean mm -hmm. and i'm like therapy hello Mm -hmm. i've been i'm learning this right now and i'm Mm -hmm. like why the why yeah why can i like the nice guy yeah well because i was talking to one of my friends about this earlier and he was like, girl, because those red flags be looking like six flags a lot of the time. It'd be looking like a good time. That's what it is. And it's a high. Yes. I literally just talked to my therapist about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's that high that like I crave or that I like. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and it's crazy because it's like, I'm at this point where I see the rad, rad, rad red flag. They, see, rad. rad That's, you're like, these are rad flags. <laughs> no, these are great. They're no, red. they're, they're red, girl. I see them. I know what I'm doing. I know. I'm like, girl, mm-hmm. you, that red mm-hmm. is looking like fire. But mm-hmm. I'm still like, all right, I'm going to touch it. I'm a, You know? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Well, because we, uh, this Ugh. is the, the, see, we skipped around so much that I didn't even get to ask you the question <laughs> that we ask everybody, which oh. I already know the answer. But tell everyone what your sign is. Oh, I'm a Taurus. Do you know your I'm big three? I'm a very proud Taurus. No, I don't get that deep into okay. it. But Taurus as a Scorpio, uh-huh. who is stubborn. Taurus uh-huh. are our sister signs, also stubborn. Are we? I yes. think you did s- tell me that at the mm-hmm. premiere. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Yes. But it's like, because we want to see what we want to see. Right? 
For ourselves, yeah. And if you yeah. show me something different, that's cute. But I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. Right. <laughs> and I'm going to just keep on proceeding forward. Yep. The red flags turn green very quickly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let's just... It's bad. Full speed ahead. Yeah, I know. What is a red flag that you can say that you have ignored in the past? A red flag that I've ignored? Duh, duh, duh. And it doesn't just have to be romantic. Because, like, I've had friendships in the past where the friend only wants to spend time with me and nobody in my life wants to spend time with them. (laughs) So then I, in turn, don't get to spend time with my friends because I'm always with this one person who's attached themselves to me like Mm. a leech. This happens to me often. I've been trying to unpack it in therapy. Really? Um, Yes, I attract a lot of crazies. So then they want to be friends, Mm -hmm. but then nobody else in my life is like, everyone else in my life is like, girl, what are you doing? Why are you friends with this person? They're crazy. And I'm like, no, I'm loyal. Yeah. They're cool. I know. I I get that way too. And sometimes I'm like, you know, somebody would tell me something about this person or whatever. And I'm like, I I don't like to base my judgment on somebody based on yes. a, another interaction or experience. Right, somebody else's opinion. Right, mm-hmm. like they did some messed up thing to them. Like that doesn't mean to me they're going to do a messed up thing. Yeah. I, in my mind, I'm thinking, or I'm, I'm giving them an excuse. I don't I don't know. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll give them a pass. Like, no, it's fine. Like they didn't do anything fucked up to me. Like I'll keep mm-hmm. in mind what they did. Mm-hmm. And then later on it's like, mm. oh, oh. Should have listened. Yeah. <laughs> that was that thing that they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. But that goes, again, to we have to, like, experience it ourselves. Right. You know? Right. Regardless of what anyone tells us. Right. Right. I think, you know, as far as romantic relationships, I, it's not even that you ignore the red flag because you see it. You just choose to proceed anyway with zero caution you know like we said if if they don't have a good relationship with their mom i think another one um and we'll get into it because there are some people who have asked questions about it is the way that they describe their exes Mm. whenever they're like oh my ex is so crazy like they they treated me like shit they always went through my phone they did this it's like why was she going through the phone why why don't we talk why why were they crazy Mm -hmm. if you're saying they're crazy what did you do right to make them crazy because there's chances are like you're not fully taking accountability of your the part that you played right in making the crazy happen right what's the other side to the story yeah because there's two sides every story and then there's a truth so what's the truth and I there might that be, in mind. yeah, uh huh, yeah, that's a good one. Red flag. Red flag. Red flag. <laughs> Red flag. Yes. If all he does is like, you have nothing good to say about your ex. Mm-hmm. Like some some exes are trash. Yes. Right. Some exes are crazy. Yes. But like, maybe also have the level of introspection to be like, I didn't choose the right person. Mm-hmm. Like that was a choice that I made. I saw this and I chose to proceed with zero caution right like i feel like we've all done that so i feel like you can't always put the blame on the other person exactly you have to take accountability at some point right and if they don't that means that's a red flag Mm -hmm. that means mm -mm, Mm -hmm. you're gonna run into some issues exactly what about have you heard of love bombing what is that Uh, uh uh-huh yeah it's it's a thing what it is a thing so i was actually I brought this up to one of my girlfriends the other day because she's been dating this guy that she met and she was like right away he was telling me everything that I wanted to hear he was so lovely he wanted to come visit me he was planning like trips in the future to come hang out with me he's giving me compliments he wants to take me on dates he's like you are the most incredible woman I have ever met in my life and of course she wanted to hear all those things because she's had bad relationships in the past She's like, girl, it just felt so good to hear somebody tell me all of the things. Mm -hmm. But she was like, I feel like it's this fast burn that's going to fizzle out very quickly. Mm -hmm. And with love bombing, that's basically what that is. It's when somebody is like giving you everything right Mm -hmm. off the bat. And you're like, oh, my God, this feels so great. This feels so great. And then they just fucking ghost. Like, then they just stop. Everything stops. It starts off like this high and then it just is gone 
they ghost like they leave or they just all stop that. doing the things stop doing the things yeah so like whereas every single morning they would text you good morning beautiful i hope you have an amazing day you're so gorgeous you're so beautiful you're so incredible good luck on that good luck on that interview girl i know you got it in the bag <laughs> i love you right away mm. like all of those things right away like the touching the feeling the everything right away and then two months pass you can't get a text back you text them three hours later they respond why are you tripping i was working blah 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 and then it just it's not the same no i can't yeah no and that's the part about dating that i don't like Mm -hmm. it's like you don't it's that like honeymoon phase they call it right right where it's like the first couple of months first couple of uh first year and you're seeing a version of this person that they've like they've created their best self mm-hmm. to win you over mm-hmm. and yeah. where does that person go or who was that person that's really inside is it but that's the thing because then in your mind you're like is that who they really are inside and like right. maybe they're just holding back from me or was that a mask that they like presented to me right. to reel me in and then just drop me off on the corner like no. a hoe. No. That happens. I believe it. It's happened I to be- me. It happens. And what did you do? Girl, cry. <laughs> <laughs> cry and leave. You just have to be done. Like, what can you do? What can you do? Because if it gets to the point where your brain is doing like mental gymnastics that it's not meant to do to figure out if the situation is even right, mm-hmm it's time to cut and leave. Like yeah. there's there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can do. But the fact is, is that so many of us are craving like love and connection and relationships mm-hmm. that when somebody comes in and they're giving you all of those things, <sighs> it feels like a warm hug. Yeah. But then they leave. And then it's like you cold and naked and in, in, in the dark, in a cave. The shade. Like, what are you supposed to do? Cry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That yeah. is, I'm sorry, girl. I know. But it happens so Ugh. often. Like, I know. And you don't realize it until it's gone. Yeah. And then I feel like so many people start overthinking, like, what did I do? Oh, God. Why did they leave? Like, I'm not good enough. Yeah. And, oh, that's, see, that, because mm-hmm. that's all up here. That's, mm-hmm. Exactly. And God that's, forbid that's you got daddy up. issues like me, then you're really like, oh, <gasps> oh, they always leave. Girl. Oh, it always happens all, to yeah, me. Why me? Yeah. Damn. But it's not you. It's them. But how do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Like a person like me, if I meet a dude, we're cool, whatever. And he's, I've, you know, he's giving me what I need, what I want to hear. Like, how do I know if, ugh, see that messes me up. Cause then mm-hmm. I start to like back away, pull mm-hmm. away and like, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust this. I know. You don't. Don't. That's the mystery of life. <laughs> you don't know if Ugh. you could trust anything or anybody until never. Until there's never there's yeah. never a time. Until you're like 50 years into a marriage <laughs> and then you're like, but you're probably still looking at that motherfucker like, are you real? Right. Like, <laughs> could you be what I think you are? But then you have situations like with my friend. It felt a lot like love bombing in the beginning. And I even told her I was like, sis. I sent her the definition of love bombing. I was like, do it this way you will. But they're still talking. It's been months. He's still around. Now they had to like create some boundaries because she was starting to get overwhelmed. And like he was doing, there was some weird shit. I told her I was not going to tell. I I asked for her permission (laughs) before I talked about this, but I told her I wasn't going to tell any specifics that had to do with her. But there was a situation where he was trying to make customized clothing with her face on it like a week after meeting her. So that was strange. Yeah. The red flag is waving. <laughs> the red flag is That is waving. extra. And that's oh. excess. That's borderline scary. That's what I told her. I said, bitch, he's going to cut you up and leave you in a basement. You need to go. But. Not the cuss. But. I, I'm just saying. I watch a lot of murder mysteries. Oh, girl. This is how it starts. Yeah. He puts your face on a t-shirt and then he kills you. Yeah. <laughs> a situation like that, that's a huge red flag. I think I would know for sure, like, no, no, no. See, Mm-mm. she did it, and they kept talking, but she told him, like, you got to chill out. Like, we got to 
rein it back in a little bit. And now it seems like they're doing well. Like, it seems like it's going well, but, you know, I guess we'll find out. I said, if I see you on a milk carton, I'm not fucking, I'm not buying the milk <laughs> because I told Wait, you. Wait, but he didn't ghost, right? No. He just, just he was love bombing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So maybe he has mommy issues. Maybe. And that's his way of overly trying to get attention or, or attach himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, interesting. It happens. It happens. But I'm just saying, she's still alive now. Thank I will God. update you if that changes um, by his hand. <laughs> I love her to death, though, so I would hate to see her go. But I did tell her ass uh, <laughs> that it was scary. Wait, I wanted to ask you. You want to get married, right? I do. Okay. Do you think, because I've seen people talk about this. Are you the type of person that wants, like, separate living quarters or a separate bedroom Here's or you're just down for, are you guys living together now no great that's great absolutely not that's great <laughs> absolutely that's, not that's great my personal Take your time. yeah <laughs> my personal thing is that i would like to be engaged before i sign paperwork with someone uh, for a property smart because that is a commitment and if i'm going to make that commitment with someone because i could do it on my own hello <laughs> period but if i'm going to do it with someone i need some motherfucking Forever. security right. exactly <laughs> exactly and if you give me that diamond and i can pawn it off at the end of this for my pain and suffering that's the kind Thank of you. down payment that i require <laughs> um but i so have you watched sex in the city not all but most some of them yeah okay well do you know that like big and carrie had their own separate apartment or Carrie had a separate apartment. I think I don't remember if Big, Big was a piece of shit. I don't remember. He's a giant red flag. I don't remember if uh, he had his own separate apartment and then they had a place together. But, but they weren't married. They, they got they married. They got married. Mm-hmm. He also left her at the altar. There's he like did? a Okay, because yeah. I, remember, I, I remember like the car scene yes. or whatever where he left. Yes. He that left was her the at show the altar. or the movie? That was the movie. That was the movie, okay. The first one. And then the second one, they're living together. They have a home, like, but she still has her apartment. Mm-hmm. Something about that tickles my titty. Something about that <laughs> in I a good like. way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Something about that I like because just I don't even want to know that you're breathing in the same space as me. <laughs> I need to know that you are out of my way. Right. But if we can have some kind of I don't know arrangement, like on this day, you'll be gone out of my space for 24 hours. <laughs> That would be nice. <laughs> but you can't ask that you can't ask that of someone who you share a home with. Yeah. It's gonna be an adjustment. Yeah. Wait, so let's say you got married, you guys had a house, and you had your own apartment or mm-hmm. a spot, you know, where you can do your you know, have your time. How would you feel with him? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> uh uh-uh. No. Same. No. Same. Because all I'm doing in my separate apartment is going to Home Goods, buying candles, farting, and fucking watching Bad Girls Saging, Club. Saging, yes. taking baths. That's it. Walking around naked. Same. But what you doing over there, I don't know. And you're going to get too comfortable over there. So bring your ass home. Oh, my God. Okay, I feel like we could talk about this all day. But I want to get to some of the questions that people have sent in Ooh. about their red flags stories. Yes, let's hear it. Ooh. Okay, y'all. Here's the first one. Hi. Um, I just wanted to share my story. Um, I've been talking to this guy since, I want to say, March of 2021. And he's just been re- moving really slow, um, not giving, you know, straight signals. Um basically telling me what I need to do, what I need to change about myself. It's like he's trying to condition me to be who he wants to date instead of just communicating. I don't know. I know it's a red flag. I know I need to leave, but we do have um, a good connection as friends, and I'm just getting tired of basically being strung along. So that's my story is really short, sweet, and I really need to leave. <laughs> so I don't really, you know, it, it's not for me. And if somebody can't handle me as me, then 
is just not meant to be. Flags are waving. Flags are waving. Sis. She already know what's up. She is, she is just like, sis is me. I am sis. Because <laughs> I know what's up, too. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. Mm-hmm. It's that high. Mm-hmm. It's that high. Oh, mm-hmm. girl. Home girl, sister girl. Mm-hmm. Sister friend. Sister friend. Listen I, up. I feel you. We are in the same boat. But you got to get up out of there. You're going to have to go. Because he gonna have can, to go. Yeah, you can tell she has feelings for him. Yeah, you know, because when it's just like a fuck or like some dick, like mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah, but I think she has feelings for him. Well, she's like our connection. Exactly. But what kind of connection do you have if he's trying to change you, like trying to make you who he wants to be? If he wants who he wants, he can go out and find it. But you don't have to change who you are. The connection could have been the dick, girl. No, the connection is... Ne- <laughs> well, let me say something. The dick can feel like the connection when you're connected. But it's not. Oh, no, it's not. I know it's not. But sometimes that's what we... You know, like, great, great sex will just mess mm-hmm. it up. But, dick uh, to bomb. Oh, I get God. it. I understand. God. But um, Or pussy to bomb. You know, whatever. Same. Same. Whatever. Same. But... Uh, yeah, but no. no. Yeah, let's, let's get rid of him. Yeah. And... Or, oh, or if you want to play with fire, if you want to like, if you're not ready to, I'm bad. I'm Here goes right. the toxicity. If you, <laughs> if you're not ready to be done, tell his ass what he needs to change about himself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Switch always, it around. I always tell men it's a two way street, mm-hmm. and they fucking hate that. Yeah. I start talking to this guy, and I'm like, look, I know what type of dude you are, mm-hmm. right? I get it. You you mess around with, cool. Mm-hmm. When we hang out, we can hang out and spend our time and and have fun and our connection and all that. But when we're not together, I'ma do me and you do you. Oh mm-hmm. no! Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. I, I, they can't handle that. No. No. Why is it that you can tell me I, I want to be with you, but then do this on the side? Right. But then I can't do it. Right. How does that work? Mr. Mamas, no. How does that work? <laughs> How does that, who does that work for? These other girls out here. Not me. I am not the one. But also, like, it works for you. It works in your favor. But what right. am I getting? Nothing. Because I'm not getting commitment from you. Nothing. Good dick is not enough to sustain No, it's not. Me. I will say that. It's not. Good dick is great, but it will not keep me around. Well, let me tell you something else about a lot of this good dick out here. <laughs> um, when you're single and, like, just having fun. It's not reliable. No. And you can't even everybody. get it on time. It's for everybody. It's community. It's for the community. <laughs> it's for the people. It's for the by people. the people. And it's fucking unreliable. You can't even get it on time. You be texting and be like, hey, hey, I'm lubed up <laughs> and ready to go. I just oiled. I just shaved. I did Where the whole nine. Where, Where you, you at? at? It'd be like, oh, shit. I'm out of town. I'm in Vegas right now. You going to come out? Am I going to come out? No. No. Why aren't you at home waiting for me to text you? Right. Hello? They're fucking crazy. They're fucking crazy. Uh, okay. Next one. This is from Carrie. Hi, Cammie. My name is Carrie, and I'm a teacher. My story is about a coworker of mine that I work with every single day, eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. So... <laughs> We have worked together for about three years. Um, Every single school year, she has something major that happens in her life where she has to be out of work for between three and seven days. So um, I'm actually on maternity leave right now. I just had my first baby in June, and I have coworkers calling me to let me know that she has been out of work for about five days now and no one knows where she's at. She just says she can't come in. And every single year there's something major in her life that happens that causes this exact thing. So obviously I feel like this is a red flag and super shady, but I wanted to leave a voicemail and ask you your thoughts on the situation. Um, The first year we worked together, her dad was horribly sick with cancer in the hospital Last year, her aunt had passed away. Her father also passed away. Um, And I believe her daughter was super sick at one point. She also said she had COVID about three times. Um, And this year now, this whole situation is going on while I'm on maternity leave. 
um, before I left for my maternity leave, she was saying that she didn't know how she was going to do this without me and blah, 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 blah. So obviously some definite red flags, but I wanted to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Listen, <laughs> I'm not here to negate anyone's life trauma, things that happened to you. Um, do I think she had COVID three times? I do not. As someone who had COVID twice, um, I think that that's kind of like the cap. I don't know anybody who's had it three times. But listen, is it a red flag? Probably for her employer. Not necessarily for you. I think she probably has a boo in Dubai somewhere. She got to fly out for a few days. She's trying to secure her bag. That's what I, I was thinking, like vacation or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there are people who just go through it. Mm-hmm. Like, and if these things are true, the father passed away, the uncle, you know, mm-hmm. like, that's that's not, those aren't really red flags because they're, they're real events and yeah. situations that are happening. Right. But there's some there's something else. Yeah. Truly, maybe, you're right, maybe it's like mental health days that she has to take. And, like, if the school is allowing it, that's not really anybody's business. Like, if she has to take her time, then she has to take her time. But I really like the idea that she could have a boo somewhere that she's flying out to see. She's like, F it. I'm, I'm she's on a yacht. cruise. She's on a cruise. <laughs> she's in the Bahamas. She's like, girl, I ain't got time for you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's so, why she got COVID three times. Exactly. Out exactly. Here. <laughs> she's been outside. That's what's happening. Okay, here are some quick fire red flag questions. Is it a red flag if my boyfriend's mom doesn't like me? Yes. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Big red flag. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it not could... going to go well in, in any right. way. Right. Right. That's the point. It's yeah. like, it's not a red flag on him necessarily. It really kind of depends on how your relationship progresses and how he ends up handling that situation and the boundaries that he sets. Mm-hmm. But damn, like a a bad mother-in-law or like a bad, you know, significant other's parent can really fuck up a relationship. Yeah. Especially if they have a strong bond, you know? I've seen it too. My girlfriend's dated a guy and they had the mother, the guy she was dating had a great relationship with his mom. The mom didn't like her. Child, they are not together. See? That did not end well. Because they, (laughs) they, the meddling that they do, it's like... And a lot of times it's because they're not happy in their own relationships and that's why they start doing shit like that. But it's Mm -hmm. like, bitch, if you don't go get you a man or a vibrator and get your life and stop Stop attaching your son like your your man. Eh. Weirdos. Yeah. Okay. Is it a red flag if he doesn't work and you're always paying, but he wants you to have a kid with him? Oh, girl. Girl. He doesn't work. He doesn't work, sis. (laughs) No, that just pissed me off. No! <laughs> what you mean? No, we not doing that, girl. Guess you know that's a red flag. You know that's a red flag. But wants to have a kid? How? <laughs> okay. Um, no, that's going to be that's going to be a no. Okay. Is it a red flag if you've never met their friends and family and it's been 2 years? Yes. That's weird. 2 years? Yes. No friends, yes. no family. You're a killer. Yes, you're a so you've killed all of your friends and family, and that's why I haven't met them. <laughs> yeah, that's what kind odd. of weirdo shit is that? Of course, like if you don't know at least what, no two years, two years. The first couple of months should be so, a friend, uh, something, something. Are you married? Like, do you have another? You have a <gasps> wife that like is being around the friends and family. Oh. Because to me, that would tell me that I'm like playing the side character. Like I'm the B character. Girl, you got that, yeah. In this A-list play. Mistress. It's giving mistress. Mm. You might (laughs) want to check into that. Let's see. Is it a red flag if he doesn't post you on social media? Uh, Not really. I think that's a privacy thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we don't want to post them either, you know? Yeah. Because again, it's a privacy thing. You want people out of your business, so... And I think depending on, like, people's work life, sometimes they don't want to post stuff like that. But, like, I saw a TikTok yesterday where this girl was like, is it shower? a red flag? Yeah, I was in the shower. <laughs> or was I on the toilet? I don't know. One of the two. I was definitely in the bathroom. Um, but the girl was like, 
is it a red flag that I commented on his post and he deleted my comment? <gasps> well, what did she say? I mean, maybe it was hard eyes. Hard eyes is nothing. Anybody can leave hard eyes. But obviously not because he deleted it. I don't like that. Exactly. Yeah. It's a red flag. I don't like that. He's trying to... He's trying to play out a different uh, storyline for somebody else yeah. who saw that or maybe could see that. And he was like, uh-oh. Nope. <laughs> Can't risk that. Can't risk that. Got to take that out. Yeah. That's definitely that's definitely a red flag. But as far as, like, posting, I think you're right. I think it does depend. Like, although, like, uh, I can't even, like, do I care if you post me? If I'm posting you, do I care if you post me? I think it depends. Yeah. I think it depends. But if you're posting like all your other friends and everybody, why why you why can't you post can't? me? Yeah. What's going on? Explain. Yeah. Explain. <laughs> oh, hold on now. Okay. Well, now you knew this was a red, like, red flag when you wrote it. Is it a red flag if he tells my friend that he'll only introduce her to his family until she looks slimmer? When... <laughs> We're not even going to answer that. He <laughs> got to go. What? No. Not you fat shaming for the family. Um, is it a red flag if I'm gay and she's still trying to connect? Wait, what? It's a, it's, it is a man. He says that he is gay and a woman is still trying to connect with him. <laughs> I'm confused. Are you confused? confused but I also know that there's a lot of women like I have a friend who is seemingly only attracted to gay men yeah and it's like I think it's a red flag just because like you're going up against something that you know you don't have a chance of getting when you could just give your energy towards something that you could benefit from yeah I just feel like what's the point um I think you just need to tell her that you're not going to ever have sex with her and that might help it might not but it it might uh, yeah um (laughs) (laughs) i can't okay is it a red flag if he only speaks about poly relationships on the first date what do you think i'm gonna say no because at least he's setting the tone and telling you exactly what he's into yeah and i would rather you be honest than fake and then we're two years in and you're talking about how would you feel if i brought somebody else in the bedroom like mm, i want to know right off the bat I agree. Honesty, honesty is key. Yeah. It has to be upfront. I think so. Somebody said, is it a red flag if he doesn't watch, if he doesn't watch Catfish? Yes, it is. <laughs> if he doesn't watch Catfish or Claws, it is a major <laughs> red flag. And Huge. we do not like him. Is it a red flag if he says his mom is his best friend? No. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Again, it's the whole respect. Just... It just depends how much of a best friend she is. Because mm. it could be one of those controlling mamas mm-hmm. that act like, that treat their sons like they're men. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. Ooh. Is it a red flag if he doesn't tip the wait staff well? Yes. Cheap. Period. <laughs> and like, it's <laughs> cheap with a put at the end. <laughs> It's cheap, but it's also like when you tip well, it's like a respect and a mature thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I tip people well, not because like, oh, I have money. No, because like they're a service worker or they might need a couple extra dollars. So like, you know, it's showing appreciation for somebody's trade or whatever they're whatever they do. Right. I also I cannot fucking stand anybody romantic, whatever people who are rude to service workers yes, that is a red flag if he's snapping at the waiter or if she's over here being like um excuse me and like being very nasty yeah i don't like that i don't like shit like that yeah. i don't like Ooh, shit like that's that that's a good one that's a huge red flag actually like i don't like shit like that yeah i don't even like when people call like housekeepers the maid like i don't even like that yeah it's not the maid yeah she's a housekeeper right <laughs> Or like I, I feel like there's another term that they used to describe themselves. But like, why? Are you, it's not your fucking maid. Right. You don't have fucking maid. Right. Shut like, up. Get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Is it a red flag if he has kids and never sees them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
if they have kids and I will say this, if they have kids and the parent of the other parent of that child has moved on with their life and is no longer attached to them, then I think it's okay. Yeah. But if the other person has not moved on, just understand that when you sign up for someone who has a child, you are signing up for a whole other person that is attached to that child and everything that comes with that. Girl. (laughs) And they be crazy. Girl. Okay. Girl. So. (laughs) But I'm. Yeah. So you just have to be careful. Like that, that definitely. It plays a role. And, yeah. like, the child could be the sweetest child in all the world. I'm not saying anything about the child. It's not about the kid. It's not it's, about the kid. It's that energy. It's that person you have to, to deal with. And their family. Yeah. Like, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Is it a red flag if their phone is always face down? Yeah. And you can't and touch d- it. And I've done that, too. Keep your like, phone face down? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I do it just so I don't, like, get distracted sometimes. Right, but I'll do it, like, on purpose. Because you don't want anything to pop up. Yeah, if I was, like, with somebody and, like, I don't want, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boop. Somebody else had asked, is it a red flag if they won't let you touch their phone? Yeah. What? what? If I can't pick up the phone and put it over here, what's the problem? Are there any... I feel like, you know, I'm all about, like, introspection and, like, looking at myself and being like, what are some red flags about me? Oof. What? Oh. Because I have them. Same. Same. I I am still learning because I am a Scorpio and a rising Virgo, and I am always right. I am learning (laughs) how to apologize. Mm, That's hard. I'm waving my own red flag because... (laughs) it is hard to apologize but like that is something you want somebody who can apologize who knows when they're wrong or like at least can accept like oh you hurt my feelings Mm -hmm. i'm going to apologize to you yeah do you have any no i'm perfect yeah of course no i'm just kidding (laughs) i have a lot of red flags i mean again being in this dating scene right now i feel like crazy sometimes Mm -hmm. because i Girl, I've been through some shit. So, like, I right. overthink and I think the worst. Mm. So, I will, like, oh, you didn't answer my c- mm-hmm. Okay. You were the bitch. So, you doing this and you doing that. And I went on your Instagram and I looked at your story and you posted. Yes. But you didn't you didn't pick up my phone call. Mm-hmm. So, and I, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, bitch, you're crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> toxic as fuck. Fuck. Yeah, but it's, I feel like oh, it's so bad. But at the same time, I'm like, nope. Yeah. Who the fuck are you with? <laughs> right, exactly. Because I feel like sometimes when you feel that way, it's like you have a reason to feel that way. Our intuition is like crazy. It's on point. Yes. I I don't even know if I said this on the podcast before, but I named mine. Her name is Intuisha. She tells me Intuisha. everything I need to know. Yeah, she's a girl in my oh. head, and she'd be like, you know. It's, you know what I know. Yeah. So let's go with that. Mm. But that's, I feel like sometimes when it when it comes up, there's a reason for it. But then there's also times when you can recognize, like, bitch, you're acting up. Yeah. Go take a nap. You're doing the most. <laughs> go eat a snack. Yeah. I've caught my, myself <laughs> a couple of times, like, I'm, like, either super chill or really, like, like I just see red. So mm-hmm. sometimes something will happen. I'm, like, grab my phone immediately, start texting. Yeah. I'm, like, mm-hmm just walk away like yes just fucking walk away yes it's just like i can't help it i know i know but it's so relatable though like none of us have zero percent toxicity inside of us yeah oh yeah the iced coffee i drink on a regular basis accounts for like 25 percent of mine so i'm an iced coffee girl too so yes agree it's there but it's about recognizing it yeah and then being able to apologize which i'm still learning how to do yeah yeah <laughs> I say, you know, it's a part of life <laughs> well thank you so much this for is so coming. much fun i hope you enjoyed it i hope At you first, come I back was like well first i thought there was more people i thought i don't know it's just me and you i don't know why i thought that girl it's just us so i was like okay this would be a cute like group thing and then i'm like red flags mm-hmm. i'm like trying to think about everything i'm like do i have enough oh there's plenty girl there's lot. plenty. A There's plenty that we didn't even, even get a chance to exactly, talk about. Exactly. We'll have part two uh, coming up soon. Because <laughs> I also want to talk about if 
they have a best friend that is of the opposite gender. Because I feel like a lot of times them girls' best friends, like if you're dating a guy whose best friend is a girl. That's tricky. Sometimes that if is... they're a girl's girl, because I have plenty of guy friends that like I'm really yeah. close with that if I meet their girlfriend, I, I'm a girl's girl. Yeah. So I'm immediately going to be like, oh my God. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. But then if you have some that are like the cool girl best friend, mm-hmm. that's a red motherfucking flag. That if is. every time they're like, oh my God, he didn't tell you we went to the spa last week. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he didn't tell you. We got like a couple's massage. It was so much fun. But like, don't worry, girl, nothing happened. Like no. it was so chill. No. You know what's a huge <laughs> red flag really quick with friendships? You can trust me. Can I? If, if you, you have, have to, to say tell it, me? bitch, bitch, bye. <laughs> Can I? Uh, right. Mm. No, no, yeah. I agree. Especially the ones who like will absorb all your tea, and you know nothing about them. Oh yeah, and you know where that tea is going too. Yeah, to their best friend. Exactly. It's not your friend. Uh-uh. It's going to their uh-uh. real best friend in a group chat. Right. Straight away. Yep. Oof. If you listen, if you if you can identify with any of the red flags that were listed in this show, yeah. it's time to sign up for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it is time to get well, really for anyone listening, it's time to sign up for therapy because it's the best. Facts. Uh which we've talked about before. Yes. The best. Yes. But if you feel like you are exhibiting some of this toxicity, just just think about it. just think about it. <laughs> just think about it. Come back to us. Yeah. And um, we'll see you next time. But let everyone know where they can find you. Yes, I can be found. Yeah. I am founded. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, at Karuchi. A, I know my name isn't easy, guys, so I'm going to spell it out. K-A-R-R-U-E-C-H-E. Also, check out K by Karuchi. It's my Period. jewelry collection, my jewelry brand that I love. And I also have some really cool things coming up that I'll send your way, girl. More Emmys on Hell the way? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. A lot, a little bit of everything, you know? Luckily yeah. for us, we're able to do, we're able to dibble and dabble in this and that and the other. Don't you love that? I do. It's the Blessed. Best. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. And so grateful and just like, let's just keep doing Whatever exactly. it is, just keep doing it. Exactly. Yeah. And congrats Amen. to you on everything as well. Thank you. I know we just met each Thank other, you, you know, uh, recently, but so proud of you and Thank you dominate you. as a female in the industry and you're so beautiful and, and, and outspoken <laughs> and like, I love it. Thank you know, you. I feel like when we have to embrace one another in these moments because we yeah. don't have enough of it out there. I agree. You know what I mean? And like, just like this, like this was so much fun. I'm glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> like it was easy. I get nervous doing interviews and talking because I'm like, I don't know. I just, you know, I, like because people overthink. are always out to fucking get you sometimes. Girl, yeah, you know how it is. Please come back, yes. please, because we got more to talk about. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> I wish we had green flag now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cami Crawford, host of the Relationship Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more videos, click below to subscribe and like this video for more Dear Media content. So shut up and listen. <laughs>